Hello guys. So welcome to the final lecture of the lecture series on the marketing process. So up to now we have discussed first two steps of the marketing process and now we are in the step three that is construct an integrated marketing program that delivers superior value to the customers. So let's have a look at this step. So once again, construct an integrated marketing program that delivers superior value. So, as we have uh, covered the step number one and two, during those steps, the company has already decided which customers to serve and which strategy to follow. Now the marketer is going to develop an integrated marketing program and this marketing program is supposed to deliver the intended value to the target customers and this uh, marketing program is composed of the marketing mix now what is the marketing mix marketing mix is a set of marketing tools a company uses to implement its marketing strategy and the major marketing tools in this marketing mix are classified into four broad groups and these four broad groups are together called the four P's of marketing. So let's look at what are these four P's of marketing are. Now once a marketer has de decided on a strategy, he has to answer certain four questions. Now, what is going to be my product or service? Because first you have to have a product in order to market, right? And this product should meet the needs of the target market. So once you have a product, the second P is the price. You have to think about setting a price for the product. Third P is the place or the distribution. Now, where can I access my customers? So if I place this uh, product here in this town or I have an, uh, I, I establish a shop somewhere in another town, so you have to decide on the place or else you have to design a website and decide like okay I'm going to um, sell this product online so that is your place so you have to decide the place where you are going to access your customers so that is where you're going to distribute the place where your customers meet your product so that they can buy it. So you have to decide on the place. And the fourth P is the promotion. How are you going to promote your product? That is, how are you going to inform your potential buyers about your product? So these are the four P's. The, the marketer has to decide. Now, we have a separate lecture series regarding these four P's of marketing or the marketing mix. Separate 12 hours have been allocated. So we are going to go into much greater detail about each one of these P's, the product, price, place and promotion into much greater detail in an upcoming lecture series. So right now you just need to know that the marketing mix is mainly composed of these four P's that is the marketing tools that are used to implement the marketing strategy can be broadly categorized into four categories which are known as the four P's of marketing and those are the product, price, place and promotion. So now then we move on to the fourth step. Engage 
customers build profitable relationships and create customer delight. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to engage customers and manage customer relationships? Now customer relationships management or CRM is a huge topic and the CRM is the overall process of building and maintaining profitable customer relationships by delivering superior customer value and satisfaction. And there are two main building blocks of CRM. That is customer value or what you call the customer perceived value and customer satisfaction. And this CRM is extremely important because the key to building lasting customer relationships is to create superior customer value and satisfaction. Because your, through your CRM, you should be able to deliver the value to the customers and by doing so, you have to satisfy your customers. So let's have a look at what it means by customer perceived value. So the customer perceived value is the customer's evaluation. Now you have to keep that in mind. This is not an evaluation done by the company. This evaluation is done by the customer. And what is this evaluation? That is of the difference between all the benefits and all the costs of a marketing offer relative to those of competing offers. Now, think of you as the customer. You go to a shop, like you go to the market, and you want to buy some product, and that product is sold by so many different companies, and you want to select from which company you want to buy the product. So you, the, you as the customer, you are going to weigh in your mind the benefits and the costs of buying that product from each and every one of those companies you have selected. Then you are going to consider with rel uh, relative to each and every company that means each of them can be considered as competing with each other so each of them have an offer for you you're going to compare those offers and see the competitive advantage so what is the what is the cost what are the costs and benefits of buying this product from this shop that shop the other one like that in your mind you are going to play out all these calculations and decide which one gives me the highest value that is known as the customer perceived value that might not be an exactly correct calculation but that is how the customers think and it's important to realize that customers often do not judge values and costs accurately or objectively and they mainly act on this perceived value and to some customers, if it is, for example, a very good brand, they might even pay more for that. There is another company right next to this company who sell this product at a lower price, but that brand is unheard of. That customer is not familiar with that brand, has never heard of that brand before. So this customer feels much more comfortable in buying the brand he has always tried. So he's going to pay a little bit more or even much more for this product that is uh, under the brand he knows very well. So for different customers, this perceived value can depend on so many things. 
and customers are always going for this highest perceived value. And then the customer satisfaction. Now whenever the customer tries to buy a product, in the customer's mind there are a bunch of expectations that he or she is expecting from the product. And when the company is selling the product, it also has, the company also has a set of like in, some information saying that this product is going to provide this benefit, this benefit like that, a set of benefits. So customer is going to match the benefits that have been advertised by the company against the benefits or the expectations that is inside in his mind. So if the customer thinks like, okay, now this product is a good match for my expectations, then the customer is going to buy that. But then when he takes the product home and tries that out himself, if he comes to the realization that this is a huge mistake, my, the, the, the performance of the product falls short of the expectations, then the customer is not satisfied and most probably the customer will not buy that product from that company again. But if the company, if the product exceeds the expectations of the customer, the customer will be highly satisfied, the customer will be delighted and customer will become a loyal customer of that company and will keep on buying that product from that company. And this is good for the company to create greater profits for the company. Now as an example, look at this company LL Bean, the iconic American outdoor apparel and equipment retailer. Now their principle is keeping customers satisfied is the key to building lasting relationships. Now if you look at this notice, it says, I do not consider a sale complete until goods are worn out and customers still satisfied. We will thank anyone to return goods that are not perfectly satisfactory. Should the person reading this notice know of anyone who is not satisfied with our goods, I will consider it a favor to be notified. About all things we wish to avoid having a dissatisfied customer. So LLB, this company knows what are the consequences of having a dissatisfied customer. So it fully focuses on maintaining very good relationships with the customers and keeping the customers always satisfied. And this is one good example, this company LL Bean is one good example of maintaining good customer relationships and keeping the customer satisfied. Then we come to the final step of the marketing process. Capture value from customers to create profits and customer equity. Now up to this step, which is the fifth and the final step, in the first four steps, what the company has been doing is creating value for the customer through the product or the service or the experience the company is offering. So you create value for the customer. Then if you have done a good job, now it is your turn or the company's turn to capture value from the customer in return. First you create value for the customer and keep the customer satisfied and then in return you capture some value from the customer. And there are, these are the ways in which more value can be captured from the customer. Those are by increasing the customer lifetime value and by increasing the share of customer and also by producing 
high customer equity. Now we are going to look at each one of these. Increasing customer lifetime value. Now what does it mean by customer lifetime value or CLV? Now CLV is defined as the value of the entire stream of purchases a customer makes over a lifetime of patronage. So that is all the, all the purchases, the value of all the products the customer is going to buy throughout his lifetime from the company. Now if the customer, if, if you have satisfied the customer, the customer is going to keep coming back to your company to buy that product. That is because now you have created a very loyal customer who is very loyal to your company and the product. And you should always make sure not to lose such loyal customers because research so shows that it's five times cheaper to keep an old customer than acquire a new one. So acquiring a new customer is a very difficult thing to do and it's much more expensive. The cheaper thing to do is always somehow keeping the current customers or the old customers satisfied because losing a customer does not mean just losing that single sale because that customer if satisfied would have come back to the company again and again but because you the company made the customer dissatisfied now you are going to lose the company is going to lose the current sale and also all the future sales so that is going to decrease the customer lifetime value so always the company should make sure to keep the customer satisfied and consequently create a loyal customer who will keep coming back and buy more and more from your company thus increasing the customer lifetime value as an example, take Stu Leonard. Now, he knows a lot. He knows very well the importance of increasing the customer lifetime value. And this person, Stu Leonard, has created the Disneyland of dairy stores, in which he maintains these two rules. You might have already heard about these rules. Rule number one, the customer is always right. Rule number two, if the customer is ever wrong, reread rule number one. That is, the customer is always right again. So now you can understand how important it is to keep the customer satisfied and thus increase customer lifetime value. Now, we come to the second aspect, share of customer. Now, share of customer is defined as the portion of the customer's purchasing that a company gets in its product categories. As an example, if a customer buys 100 products from the market from different companies, out of those 100 products, how many products has he purchased from your company? That portion is the share of the customer from your company. Now, we have many needs and wants. We want to travel, we want to eat, we want to buy cars, we want to buy groceries, we have to, do, we have to work with the banks. So for each of these uh, expenditures, like for example, in the case of travel, and if you are traveling in an airline, Airlines want, each and every airline wants greater share of travel from the customer. If the customer is going to go abroad, the airline, by using air, then each and every airline wants to have, a, have the highest share of that customer's air travel. If it is a car company, they want to increase their share of garage from each and every customer. And if it is a restaurant, they want to increase the share of stomach from each and every customer. If a particular customer buys five different types of food, a particular restaurant would want 
all those five items to be brought from their restaurant rather than the customer buying three from that and going for another two restaurants to buy the other two items. So how would the company would go about this? How would a company sh in try to increase the share of customer? One of the best strategies that have been followed by many companies is to increase the variety of the products a company creates. Now, if, the com if a particular customer wants to buy five different types of products, and if your company only makes one product out of all those five, then the, com the, then the customer will have to go to another shop to buy the other four items. And usually we don't want to do that. It would be very easy for us if we can buy all the five items from one shop. That means it's a one-stop shop. You only stop at that shop and buy everything from that shop. That is possible only if your company sells a variety of products. So in order to increase the share of customer, the company should make sure that the company sells a variety of different products. As a good, good example, you can think about Amazon.com. Usually, when we log on to Amazon.com, let's say to buy a book, we end up most of the time buying not only that book, but some more other items as well. Because Amazon is following this very ingenious method of recommending customers but they might want to consider buying based on their history of purchases because the company amazon.com keeps track of the previous purchases of each and every customer and they have created this very nice recommendation system which looks at the previous purchases of each and every customer and then going to recommend certain purchases when they log in again to the website. So most of the time, when customer logs into the website to buy something, they might end up and they most probably will end up buying some other items that, are, that have been recommended by Amazon.com as well. And to do that, Amazon has diversified the types of products it is selling on the website. It, it is not only selling books, it sells everything. It has a huge range of products. So it, it has become a one-stop shop for almost every customer. And it, it most of the time delivers those products right to your doorstep as well. So it's so easy for the customers. So through this ingenious plans, Amazon.com has been able to increase its share of customer. And then we come to customer equity. Now the customer equity is defined as the total combined customer lifetime values of all of the company's current and potential customers. Now previously we looked at what it means by customer lifetime value or COV. That is the value of all the products that a customer buys from a company in his or her lifetime. My customer equity refers to those CLV values of all the current customers and potential, that is the future customers. So because this customer equity is considering few potential future customers as well, it can be considered as a measure of the future value of the company. Because a particular company might have many customers at present, but in the future, there might be the possibility that the company will run out of business because the company loses all the customers. The company cannot diversify its products according to the evolving needs of the customers 
then the company cannot keep up with the evolution of the customers. Then the company will be out of business in the future. So this custom equity, the value of custom equity will tell us not only the current customer base, not only about the current customer base of the company, but also about the future customer base of the company. So this is an important case from which you can understand the value of custom equity. We are going to uh, compare these custom equities of Cadillac and BMW. In the 1970s and 1980s, Cadillac had so many loyal customers. So at that time, it had a, it had a huge customer base. So many people like to buy Cadillac cars. But as people evolved, as we came into the 1990s and 2000s, Cadillac still did not change the look of their cars very much. They always thought we have a good customer base. Why do we care? But as the people who bought the Cadillac cars became older and older, the newer generation did not want or did not think the Cadillac cars were stylish enough. They wanted like more beautiful looking, more stylish cars. And Cadillac was not equipped to evolve with this trend. And this is what ended up in Cadillac having a much less value in custom equity. Because the Cadillac customers were getting older and older. Although the old people, all the customers liked how the Cadillac cars looked, the newer generations did not want to buy the Cadillac cars because they, were, they did not look good in their eyes. So Cadillac with time was losing its market equity or the customer equity because it started getting lesser and lesser number of potential buyers. So it had, although it had a huge current customer base, the number of potential customers, potential future customers was becoming lesser and lesser. And compare that situation with the situation of the company BMW. In the 1970s and 80s, it had a much lesser customer base when compared to Cadillac. But with newer generations, younger customers started buying more and more BMW cars. They started liking how it looked because those cars were they really looked stylish and they could identify what the newer generations need so they are they change the designs of their cars according to the, to the needs and wants of the future generations so although BMW company did not have a good customer base in the 1970s and 1980s like the Cadillac company did it had a future had a good future with a good customer equity because with newer designs the number of potential future customers were increasing by the day. So in the late 1980s BMW overtook the Cadillac. So this is a wonderful example of the importance of customer equity. Although things look very stable for your company in the present time, you should not think that things will never change. Things always change. So you should be ready when the customer needs and wants evolve. If you don't do that, your customer equity is going to go down and the company will soon be out of business.
So this slide sort of summarizes the process that we had we have been discussing so far. Now the customers will always look to buy something based on the perceived value. So the customers will look at all the benefits of buying a product and they subtract all the costs because all this this calculation is going to play out in their mind. It might not be exact, but in their mind they are going to calculate, do some rough calculation on the all the benefits they get minus the cost and the competitive advantage. That is like when I compare all these shops, which shop will give me the highest advantage? So they are going to factor that one as well into the equation and then in their mind they are going to calculate some perceived value. And if the perceived performance, once they buy the product and take it home with them, if they can see that the performance of the product exceeds the expectation, then the customer will be satisfied. If the customer is satisfied, it will create a loyal customer. And when the customer is loyal, the customer will keep on coming back to your company and buy more and more products, which is going to increase your profits. So guys, this brings us to the end of the lecture series on marketing process. And we will meet again in other lecture series on marketing mix and also product life cycle. Until then, have a good day.